Okay. Hi guys. Um Yeah, I'm going to be crocheting on stream today. Hi, I'm Priyanka. We had some issues getting up and running, but um I'm gonna be demoing the mosaic stitch today for y'all. Um yeah. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fun together. Um so you don't need that much to get started with this. Um I I taught myself crochet and I kind of you know it up on the internet. I feel like a lot of people learn stuff on YouTube nowadays. Um yeah, so I am gonna be starting off with just this hook. I need some scissors for this. Um and then I brought like a whole bunch of yarn. I'm not gonna show all of it down here, but um I bought a ton of colors of yarn, so because um the way this pattern works is with two alternating colors. So hopefully, um I should be improving and switching colors as I go. Um just for fun. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I'm gonna start out with this. Um Yeah. So um you only need to know, I think, like three techniques other than the slip knot in order to get started. Um, so, um, so first you have to do just a basic slip knot, um, which I struggled with this for the longest amount of time, but, oh, um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm working on the mosaic stitch, well, I'm crocheting the mosaic stitch, and hopefully I should be able to this off. I've never actually done it before, but I'm really excited to because it's a really, really neat um, stitch. But yeah, so um, my pattern is going to be basically, since it repeats, it's almost like a tessellation. I'm going to be doing six stitches over and over again. So um, I'm going to be doing like 18 stitches and then two quarter stitches and one for height. So like math wise, 18 stitches plus those extra three that I need. Um, I'm gonna be doing, tw I'm gonna be chaining together 21 here. So, yeah. I did the slip knot and then I'm gonna start. Yeah. I've um, never had to crochet for an audience before. So, <laughs> um, please excuse me if I'm holding stuff weirdly. Or, like, yeah, if you can't see what I'm doing, let me know. Yeah, so I um, usually forget, like, I lose count a lot, um, so I'm trying my best not to lose count while also not boring you, but um, I'm at 14. I can always count afterwards, so it's not, like, the biggest deal. 15, 17, okay, we have 18, the number that I'm actually going to be working with, but we'll have two border stitches, that's two more, and then we need one stitch literally just for height, so... I'm gonna do more. Okay, so I'm gonna count this out uh, just in case I missed any, and hopefully this will be useful for you too if you're crocheting. Um, wow, I just realized it's going up way too high on the board. Um, but I'm with this way closer. But we have one, two, four, five. Nine, fourteen, fifteen, and nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and then this this at the end doesn't count. It's like literally just the knot. But yeah, it's it's true. Whenever you're doing like art stuff, um, it's really really cool to incorporate math because you know math is everywhere. It's in nature, the golden ratio, all that. Um, so it, you know it's a pretty much fail safe way to go. But, um, so to get started, I have to do, like, two normal rows, basically, before I actually start my pattern. So I'm just going to be single crocheting all along this chain. So I'm going to skip that first one, because that's for height. And then I'm going to be going into this one. Single crochets, so that means, like, put your hook in. Yarn over, which is, like, fancy, I guess, yarn people terms for um, wrapping your yarn around the needle like that. And then pull that through, and then pull them. Yeah, so 
I'm just going to continue going like that um, along this chain, and I'll probably count them at the end to make sure that I didn't mess up. But yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing. Also, when you like start this first chain, it's a little weird because you um you just enter into like the first loop up here, and that feels like a that's always felt a little unstable to me. But, uh, there's videos of people photoshopping faces into the golden ratio. I just finally took a look at chat after struggling with this knot, but um, I didn't know that. I'm I'm gonna have to Google that after, honestly. Maybe that's something someone can do on stream. I'd be fascinated to see. Like, I don't know. It's always a little weird when people's faces are altered, like the proportions and stuff. Um, especially with like cybersecurity nowadays. Ah, it's a good word. Yeah, well, especially with cybersecurity nowadays, like, people sometimes will, like, warp their faces to, like, look different because they don't, like, want their face data, I guess, like, their biometrics um, captured by companies. <laughs> so, like, I keep seeing these videos where people have, or not videos, um, pictures where people have subtly al altered the actual proportions of their face to, so they, you know, so they won't be recognized measurements-wise. It's so creepy every time. Like, it's this uncanny valley situation of like i know this person doesn't exist in real life they look like they exist yeah scary it's it's the scariest things are when something's slightly off but you don't know what that's some dread right there um but there are some pretty cool videos on youtube about um it's the same thing but for languages where it's like they're making up words and it sounds like the approximation of a language. Um, but like, it sounds like you should be understanding it and it's like really weird because it's nothing, it's gibberish. Also, hi, uh, my, that's my mom actually. <laughs> hi, mommy. <laughs> Thanks for coming to see me crochet. Yeah, so for the one, the one new person, um, I'm just doing a row of single crochets as my foundational like row. Because I'm doing a really cool pattern, and I it's a two-color pattern, so I need to just get that first row in. Yeah, have something to work off of, basically. Wow. Also, this is, if you've noticed, um, this is what happens to amateur crocheters, uh, where it gets all twisty because my tension isn't consistent on this. There is a way to fix that when you're crocheting mm -hmm. called blocking. Um, it's really encouraged after you finish a project to do it, and it's basically like, you stretch it out into the proportions that your project's actually supposed to be in so that it doesn't look all lumpy and weird. Um, yeah. Oh, also, it's super easy to learn how to crochet. Oh, cool. Hi, everyone. <laughs> There's more people. It's so nice to have this many people watching. Um, I hope that this will be something fun for you to watch and not just me babbling about nothing. <laughs> this is fun for Twitch. Anyway, so I got my first row. Um, hopefully when I count this, it'll be, um, it should be 20 because my two border stitches and then I need eight. I want it to divide into six sheets every six stitch. I'm going to sit here and count this to make sure I didn't mess up. Um, okay. You can count from the top, by the way. That's, I used to like count from the side when I was first learning. And I would get so confused because, like, how how do you look at, like, this, right, and tell that there's... Okay, anyway, I digress. I'm going to look at the top and count down. So, one, two, three, four, five, seven, ten, twelve, nineteen, twenty. So, yay, we have the correct number of stitches, which is important because, like, math is really important for this one. Okay, but um, since we're switching colors, I'm just going to cut this with my little rainbow scissors here and um, pull this piece of yarn through so that um, I can knot it, which to knot with crochet it's really easy. You literally just pull the yarn through and then tighten it. Yay. Yeah, so all I have is this little thing, which it doesn't look like much so far, but it will, hopefully. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab another color. I brought like a giant box. This is you can't see this well, but I brought a giant box of yarn because I wasn't sure. I'm an indecis. Um, I think I'll go with this screen though, which I haven't unwrapped, but um, yeah. Also, fun fact: if you've never crocheted before, um, if you want to learn, 
on each uh, yarn label, it's actually really useful because they tell you the exact, like obviously there's different thicknesses of yarn, right? Um, so it tells you the thickness, they have like a scale for it, and it tells you the hook size or the needle size that you're supposed to use with it, which is pretty cool because then like, you know, <laughs> if you're like me and you're just in the store impulsively and you don't know what you can actually use, you can just, oh, like look at the back and it'll be fine. Um, obviously they're like a little off sometimes, but yeah. General good rule of thumb if you're um, so you don't have to use thin yarn when crocheting. There's, I actually find thicker yarn easier to use literally just because you can see it and, um, like find the end a lot better. But, um, yeah, I think think ugh, thin yarn is harder, right? Like how using a thin pointed, um, pen to do like detailed work is harder because like basically your needle size and your yarn size dictates how thin your piece is going to be right since i used this hook it's like kind of medium looking and since i use this thick yarn it's you know it's like big but if i already use thin yarn it'll get like really really small and intricate um and it can be really hard to tell what you're doing when it's like also this i usually roll my yarn into balls for this exact reason because i can't get it untangled from the skein so i'm gonna use this yellow instead because up with that <laughs> yeah also uh fun fact if you like me and you like to crochet like in public or on the go um if you work with balls of yarn and you know obviously when you set them down they like roll around um bring like a box with them that you can put them in there so they don't roll away um i usually use um those foldable like boxes i think meant to like organize your drawers in like ikea or whatever but yeah because you can flatten it and put it in your um in your backpack so it doesn't take up a bunch of space like a basket would also yeah this bowl of yarn is my only one that's uh done this nicely because my roommate did it um i am not capable of this level of like nice looking yarn like my my other ones look like this it's not it's not pretty um but i'm just gonna cut off the gross ends of this so. but Literally, all I'm gonna do is um, make myself another slip knot just so I have something I have to hold on to. So that's sorry, I was gonna do it without showing you. So you make a loop like this, and then through the loop and grab the yarn on the other end and pull it through. That you know, I'm trying to show you with this like super open, but it's like falling over like this. Like it looks like this, and then you tighten it magically. But it's not okay. So. Um, one funny thing about this pattern is that, like, it's a tessellation, so normally when you're crocheting, you would go back and forth, right? So, like, I went this way with the chain, and then I went this way with my single crochet, so you'd go, you know, zigzag, 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 like, above it. So, you'd go from this direction to this direction. But, like a, you know, precise pattern, I can only go right to left on this, which, um, yeah, that's pretty weird for a pattern, but... That's what I'm going to have to do, and I'm going to have to remember. So if I don't, I'm going to have to go backwards and fix it. But, um, so on the top here, when you normally crochet, you put your hook through the two loops, like both of the loops on the top, because um, that makes it more stable. If I can actually see out here. Um, I'm going to do this really carefully, because normally when I'm doing it on my own, um, I let myself mess up all the time. I don't count anything. I'm like... <laughs> Just flying by the seat of my pants here, but I don't want to like have to unravel and fix it on camera. That's really boring. But okay, so I so I have my original slip knot and I have my like piece on this hook now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna yarn over and then pull all the way through, which is called a slip stitch. Um, because you slip through and then you're attached like this, see? That's not that neat, but <laughs> I'll fix it. Needs to be tightened a little. Okay, so yeah, got started on this one. So I'm already in that first stitch, so I'm gonna chain one for height because, like, because I started this round, like, there's there's no height to this stitch, so I'm gonna chain one, like, a little taller, and then I'm gonna go in with single crochets this entire row again because, um, yeah, we need to form that border with both of these colors um, in order to get started. I can find where it be good. 
Yeah, I'm really struggling with this one just because I slipped knots also in there. So yeah, but um, crocheting is a really like easy skill to pick up, especially in this day and age of um people doing videos online. Like I learned entirely from YouTube, and then I started um reading crochet notation. And like crochet notation made no sense to me for a while, and that's why I didn't get into fiber arts for a hot second. Like I started knitting first, which that's a whole other can of worms I'm not gonna open because I hate knitting. But um, yeah, uh, don't worry about reading the notation. Just look up videos to do literally anything. That's how I learned. Like that's how I've learned almost all of the really pointless skills that I have. Ugh, I hate how this looks. I'm going to go in again. Sorry, everyone. Also, hey, Dan, um, it's good to see you. You called me like directly before I started the stream and it was really weird because I was panicking and trying to get online because it's the first time. Um, yeah, but watching crocheting videos I found is always really calming. Like obviously I watch tutorials on YouTube and that's great, but yeah, I also really love um, when I get to see people just do it to music. Um, I've done it here, here on Twitch, um, which, my lovely mod, Abby, uh, linked um, our past library of videos where there's other people crocheting or there's other people on Twitch or there's creators on um, TikTok that do it a lot, actually. Um, I didn't know that they live streamed on TikTok for like a while, but apparently they do. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. OK, so there's my first double crochet or sorry, single crochet, Ah, not a double. OK, yeah, so I'm back into here. A little messy. We're gonna get this foundation stitch and we're gonna have the correct number of stitches and it's gonna be great. <laughs> okay, I'm on stitch three, I believe. See, now with this lighter yarn, I think it's a little easier to tell. I'll bring you closer. See, you can see the one, two, three. Um, now that I'm actually on my second one, especially like to start out a row, things can be like a little lumpy and weird. Like, you know, this one looks. A little messier, but that's what foundational chains are for, or whatever. You know, as you go on, it'll get better. Yeah, but um, I do this a lot at work because, like, I work somewhere else in the library too. Um, and there's downtime sometimes where you know you have to be paying attention so you can help people. But like, you know, you're still like sitting there and you don't have a project or anything. To if I'm not studying, I usually have my crochet stuff out a lot of the time because I can still like be aware and help patrons while doing something fun. It's a good uh, little fidgety habit to have, especially if you like watching movies like me. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, I have an ergonomic crochet hook, which is really nice because um, I tend to grip things really tight. Like I was one of those little kids I was just like holding on to my pencil like it was a knife <laughs> when I was learning to write. And I still tend to press down like really hard. So having this especially helps. And then there's a couple different ways to hold yourself as well. Like you can hold it like like a pencil like this, or you can hold it like this, which is what I'm currently doing. I'm trying to get better about my um, technique, but I didn't feel confident enough in like bringing that technique to this stream yet. But hopefully as time goes on, you'll like see proof. Um, in relation to other hand stuff, like our hand protecting stuff, right? Because when you do like a repetitive motion like this over and over again, right? Like human bodies are a wreck. Like something's gonna happen to your joints or like whatever, you know, there's like health complications. So um, I have this ergonomic hook. I also have um, like gloves that are like circulation gloves. So they'll keep my blood still running. Cause if you, you know, <laughs> if you're doing a lot of motions and you're circulating, that, that's not good. Um, and then I also really try to like warm up and like cool down before and after I'm going to sit down for a long time, like as long as I'm being diligent. And that sounds silly. Like I know that's something that most people talk about for like gyms and stuff, but like it's still important for a lot of those littler muscles, especially like, like your hands. Um, I know in this day and age, we're always using keyboards. We're always on our phones. So like, especially if you're on your keyboard a lot, um, Stopping to do some like little wrist exercises and like push out your finger go a long way. Um, but yeah, this hook is purple because this series actually they have like their all their sizes color coded. Um, so this size was purple. <laughs> so that wasn't my choice. Also, you can see where I scratched it here with my fingernail. 
when I temporarily had really long nails, which I don't do well with. So <laughs> yeah, this looks a little worse for the wear. Um, I think the number's written on here somewhere, but I don't see it. Maybe I literally used it enough that it's worn off. But um, I have some other fancy hooks here that I'm still working on breaking in that I haven't used that I can show you as an example. Because um, these are some like bamboo hooks. They're really nice. Um, they are currently, they have this like beeswax stuff on them because I'm trying to like break them in because the grain of the wood runs this way. So that means that in this part where there's a cut where I'm literally using, where I'm using the hook, the grain will like rub up against your yarn. So there's two things that you can really do for that. Um, and the first thing is like time. You just, you know, wear it in, like literally use it. But the second thing is that you can, you know, um, slick it up with either beeswax or I think like linseed oil. Like that stuff I think is used a lot on like wooden cooking boards, like to keep them nice. Um, I digress. I got my fingers all sticky. I need to get back to this. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I've been trying to work with a smaller yarn size. Um, so they're called weights, like a bigger weight or a heavier weight is like thicker yarn and a light, lighter weight. Lighter weight is a thinner yarn. So um, I've been trying to work with like a smaller yarn that I normally use, which is I use this because it's like standard, you know, like it's medium. It's the one that you see all the time. But I've been trying to work with smaller yarn lately because I have this hook set. Like I got a bunch of different ones. So I'm trying to practice. Uh, branching out, but it's like really difficult with thinner yarn, especially a, when it's made of different materials. But now, as you can see, this looks less terrible. It's still curvy, but we won't talk about that, okay? Um, but I'm gonna count my stitches real, real quick here to make sure that my count is still correct. Um, but one quick way to tell that your count is correct, and it's a little harder on shorter pieces, like when someone's made a blanket or a scarf, like you can tell that they messed up if you look at this side and it's not straight, right? Because all the rows have to be the same size. So if it's like slanting this way or slanting this way, it's it's not good. Okay, but anyway. Oh, we have one, two, five, six, eleven. Yes. Yay, I'm so bad at counting stitches. So that's sadly kind of a victory for me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to cut this the same way that I did and then pull the yarn back through. Make that a knot because we're switching colors again. Also, um, hi, Rushi Mama. It looks like my whole family is just like rolling in, so I really appreciate the support. Um, yeah, but Okay, so we have two foundational rows, so now we can actually do the fun stuff because this is just like boring stripes, right? So we're going we're gonna to get fun. So I'm going to grab my old color. God. The whole, the tail is just stuck in my yarn, the yarn box. Okay. All right. Minor crisis averted. Also, if you get into fiber arts, you're going to spend like way too much of your time untangling yarn. This weekend when I was at my parents' place, I brought a bunch of yarn and I just stuck it into my bag like a weirdo and didn't like bother to like ball it up or make sure that it wasn't getting tangled. And I literally ended up with my legs tangled like late at night. So I was crocheting because I couldn't sleep. Anyway, um, okay, so we have our foundation chain, and this was my last row, right? So I'm going to continue building on this. So, okay, I, I'm not sure whether I went left to right beginning off, but now that we're actually starting our pattern, I have to actually stick to that. So I'm going to make sure that I start on this side with the, the first tail, I think is how I'm going to remember it. Um, but I'm going to go this way to this way, and we're going to get started with our pattern. So, um, if you remember at the beginning, or if you weren't there, um, I'm doing this pattern called, or uh, st this stitch called a mosaic stitch, which means that um, it kind of changes. Like, you'll see, it looks like a mosaic, like the ones in stone. Um, so it can be really cool. You can kind of make it look like stained glass windows sometimes, too. But basically, the general rule of thumb is that you have a pattern that repeats. So I have a pattern that takes up six stitches before repeating. So um, that's why I have to work from one side to the other. Otherwise, my pattern will get reversed every time I do that. So, wow, I was about to start on the wrong side. Okay, so we're going to start on the yellow, obviously, because I'm alternating colors, right? Um, and I'm going to get this first uh, single crochet in, because that's our border stitch. So we don't count that in our count <laughs> when we're doing the repetition, because 
I have 18 stitches plus my two extras, which are my border stitches, so that's 20. Yeah. Um, but yay, I'm glad to see that my cousin is also watching me, so that's really nice. Um, but, okay, so here's my pattern, right? So what's gonna happen is, you know how, I explained in the beginning, I think, when you crochet, when you put in your stitch on this top, you go under both of these, so like for this, you don't go just into this one. You go under both of them, like this. Um, but for this pattern, we're gonna be going into just that back loop. So I'm gonna be going into only this um, in the future, but for the border stitches. Border stitches. But um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I have a screen back here where I have my pattern up just in case I need it. And right now is just in case. So yeah. Okay. So the first stitch after the border stitch, which I just did. Um, you have to move down because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this blue go down and you'll start to see the pattern a bit. I don't know why I keep trying to explain it. It's not going to make sense for a while. But, oh no, oh my gosh, you guys, I just realized that I messed up. I was supposed to be going into the back with the second row as well. So I'm actually going <laughs> to get rid of this and do that again. Um, I should have started talking about that sooner. Very sorry, everyone. <laughs> But yeah, this is my first time doing the mosaic stitch, so hopefully, I don't know, me um, like struggling with certain things will help you know what pitfalls to avoid if you want to do this as well. Also, this is real life, <laughs> and people mess up sometimes, so I guess that's also probably good to show. Also having the most trouble getting this off. Apparently I'm a really like secure crocheter, <laughs> like it's going to be really stable, which I guess is good for the purpose of like me making things, but it's really bad when I have to remove things. Um, also, fun fact, because I switched uh, colors and I, you know, I knotted it off, it's really more hard to remove than stuff I normally do, because if I'm doing one color, then you can just pull the string and like unravel it, you know? Um, like this, but. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Uh-oh. Also, I just realized that my overhead camera died. I'm going to fix that really quick. I'm also going to try not to knock anything over in here because that would. Yeah, I'm really sorry about the delay in um, getting streaming. Uh, like, there was a technical issue, and for some reason I couldn't get even into the computer, which is why everything's so haphazard. I came, I came to the um, library, which is where the streaming studio is, like, 30 minutes ahead of even my like setup time <laughs> to avoid these types of issues but unfortunately that's what we're what we're dealing with here okay this is not focused but we're gonna focus okay i think this will be good in a second sorry everyone <laughs> yeah First stream is going a little chaotically, but I guess it's kind of fitting considering my personality. If you haven't already gathered, if you're not my family, which, <laughs> okay. I'm glad at least you didn't get to see me unraveling, but I made this whole mess um, and unraveled a bunch of yarn because I realized I was supposed to be going into the back loop. Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about that again, just cause I feel like that got a little jumbled with me realizing that I messed up, but okay, Slipknot again over that you guys you guys are pros at this point you don't need to see that <laughs> but okay so we're gonna be working right to left always so i'm gonna actually be good and start out from this side and go that a ways uh but i'm gonna get this in first then basically when you crochet normally you have to go in through both of those loops but because this pattern is weird and it's like a repeating pattern I'm gonna have to go into just the back loop so that I have room to do it again later, even with this foundational stitch, as we've learned. Um, so yeah, these two loops, I'm only gonna go in that back one for my first actual stitch. Upwards. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll I'll count after. Yeah, so you you'll be able to see it like this. Like this is by the way why you don't want to do it normally. Like look at that, it's like all pulled out <laughs> and gross looking. It'll work for this, but um. I think just personally, since I tend to crochet things really tightly, 
I need to like make sure that I'm actually because uh, otherwise I think I'll pull everything out. Yeah, I guess I just do everything hard. Like I write hard, slam doors really hard, <laughs> I crochet tightly. You know how it is. Yeah, it like presented a lot of issues in grade school because I like couldn't erase anything. And um, I used to really like to draw a lot. So that was like a big issue. But like, I would do really cool stuff, but I would obviously mess up a lot and ugh, gross, yarn fuzzies. And then I wouldn't be able to erase it because I got so, so hard. Oh, also, Haya. Haya Siri. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is just the boring part, unfortunately. It's going to get cooler in a hot second. I just have to lay down my foundational chain of these like two first colors. And then it actually gets fun. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get there in a second. You know, it's probably better that I like actually slow down and make sure that I'm not messing up rather than going fast, which is I, I always do the latter because I'm impatient as a person. <laughs> OK. All right. Oh, hi, Shushanti. OK, cool. Hi. <laughs> that makes sense. I was like, I mean, I just thought it was someone that joined from the school. So. Um, also, I just. This is a little silly, but I just realized that I absolutely chose like minion colors, but we're not going to talk about that right now, okay? <laughs> we're gonna pretend that that's not happening and that the minions movie didn't happen. I'm honestly really mad because Despicable Me was like pretty all right, right? Like it was a good children's movie series. It was on par with, I would say, like Shrek and Megamind, but like, no, they came up with another movie and I understand that it got wildly popular and that it made money. But, like, also the minions are an unholy terror, and I would rather not see them ever again. Shrek and Megamind are fantastic. Thank you. Um, to dunk on my dad here real quick, um, after I count these stitches, I should probably do that first before I forget. But, two, three, four, five, six. hope I'm not going too fast, guys. 10, 11, 12, 13. 17, 19. Aha, see, this is why we count our stitches because I was not going to do one and we need 20. And I almost messed up because the end of this looks so weird because <laughs> it got all pulled out and stuff when I was um, unraveling. So it's a little messy right now. But also, this one's going to be really hard to get into. Before mentioned, like crocheting habits, a bad habit. Don't learn, learn from my mistakes. Don't do this to yourself. It's, it's such a struggle. You're like trying to stab it in. God, don't put Shrek in the same category. I bet that's my dad uh, typing in chat because he likes Shrek to the point where he puts no other animated movie on the scale with it. So he just refuses to watch animated movies like ever again. Like, cause he thinks nothing will ever compare to Shrek, I guess, except for Toy Story. Um, yeah, sorry, I don't know if it's like I'm allowed to bully people on the internet at work, but I feel like this is fair game since it's my father, and I'm pretty sure he's not going to like see for this, so I think we're in the clear. Anyhow, okay, so we're actually done for real with this second ugh, chain, and you can tell that I did it correctly because we only went into the back loop on all of these. Which if I turn it vertically, like you can see that that, that blue row, uh-oh, uh I'm above. The camera thing. Okay, sorry. Um, so you can tell that I did it correctly because I went into only the back loop of this, which means if you turn it like vertically, you can see like the blue sticking out, which you normally wouldn't because it would be stacked right on top. So thank you for the compliments. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna cut this color, tie it off, and hopefully I won't have to unravel it again. Um, <laughs> Also, let, let me know if I'm, like, leaning too far forward and um, you can't see what I'm doing because I seem to, like, be traveling northward for no reason. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Also, this is, this is the front. Like, this is the front side. And you can fuck a stuff sticking out. And then this is the back side, which is really, really lame and kind of whack right there. But we'll not talk about that. Okay, so I tied it off this way. 
means that that's my ending, which means I need to start this way because we're going right to left. Don't let me forget it. <laughs> um, but since we just did yellow, we're going to switch over to blue. And this is where the um, tessellating pattern comes into play. So I'll probably put my scissors in view. Okay. So I still have my slip knot from before, so we're kind of cheating because I did that before. Don't have homemade, store bought is fine. <laughs> yeah, so this is the front. You can tell because it's like sticking up like this. So, all right. So, for our border stitch, we're going to go into both as we talked about because it needs to be like stable, like, you know, to really lock it in because otherwise it's going to, you know, the yarn's going to be like all unraveling all over the place. So, those border stitches are really important. Okay. So, now that we've done that, I'm going to go into the back loop. Again, except this is where the plot twist is. Are you ready, guys? <laughs> so basically what happens is I'm going to do one, one line that's longer that connects to the blue. So this will make sense in a second here. Instead of going into this top, um, this top loop here that I would normally go into up here, right? I'm going to go into the front loop down here. And that's why we only did the back loop. So I have all this lovely space to like improv this pattern. So if I keep going, you'll see how this turns out. But basically, that was not a double crochet. Sorry, everyone. So I went into this, I went to this front loop down here, or I will. I also forgot to say, we're doing a double crochet this time, which is, it's basically like a taller version of what I just did. So instead of just having one loop, we're gonna yarn over and then insert our hook. Then yarn over again and we're gonna pull this back and then yarn over and then pull these two loops back and then yarn over and pull one back so we're you know gradually taking them off but as you can see that resulted in like a way taller little guy like you know for comparison this is the normal height and this one's all big it almost looks like a braid kind of but yeah so as you can see this went this went all the way down to the previous blue because we're starting to add a change in our pattern so I'm gonna do that for every first stitch because remember we're repeating six. So I'm gonna do that weird one for yeah, um every one, the first one out of the six. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to actually start counting on screen. <laughs> um I almost did them both. And then you know, for the rest of them, you just go into the back loop like normal. Also, when you look back here, you can see the stitch where I would have gone into. So instead of going into that one, I have to go into the next one. Also, let me know if I'm just babbling and that doesn't make sense to you. I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate feedback. Yeah, so the rest of the stitches are just going to be normal single crochets in the normal spot. But for those, that weird odd one out, that's going to be a double crochet. So I've done, I'm, I did two normal ones, so I'm on three. Four. Okay, so that's our six, right? So right now, it looks like this. Pretty weird. There's just a line there. But, uh, yeah, we're going to repeat our pattern again because I did, just did six stitches. So we're going to do the same thing that I did last time. So we see this stitch where I should have gone. We go directly down to the one in the previous row, and then I go into that back loop. Or not back loop, front loop. Right there. But first I'm going to yarn over once because we're doing a double crochet, and so I need that extra yarn. Ugh. I'm gonna show you this the best I can, but there it is. <laughs> it's gonna get less awkward as um, the pattern progresses and I get more length um, that I can play with. But yeah, there's our second crochet. So if you can see, I kind of made a, like a little window. Pretty cool. Um, so the name of the tool that I'm using, so I'm crocheting, so I'm using a crochet hook. Um, and the difference between knitting and crocheting, which I, I'm sure people know, but you know, I like talking about it anyway, so, and you guys can't stop me, so I'm gonna talk about fiber arts. Um, so crocheting is done with a hook and it's typically done with one hook like this. And um, usually the way you build stuff in is chains like this. Um, knitting is a lot more like grid-ish. And it's done with two needles and they're, they're needles, not hooks, so they're like straight. And that's probably what you've seen more commonly um, when people are like doing yarn stuff. Um, but I'm using a crochet hook. Yeah. 
Um, and if you're curious, because there's different sizes of them, this is a five millimeter one. Um, as always, because no countries can agree on anything useful, <laughs> um, there there's like different size notations for like different countries. Uh, so that's really weird, especially when you're looking for directions, because I learned online. So sometimes I'll like um, listen to British YouTubers, or there's this one Icelandic lady that I learned this in particular from. Um, also, we've just hit one, two, three four, five of our normal stitches on this first weird one. So we're going to repeat our pattern again by going down there. But like I was saying, yeah, the notations are all different f across the countries. So even for the measurements, like I usually try to go by the millimeters because it's like a, you know, like a unit rather than being like, oh, this is a U.S. size I-9 or whatever. Very silly. Um, there's our first stitch. Forward. Yeah, um, so commonly um, I get my patterns from YouTube just because I'm always doing it via video tutorials, but now I'm going to go back because it's now that I've started learning uh, yarn notation or like yarn crochet notation like a little better. Um, I've been trying to really get into the habit of like reading stuff. So there are a lot of free pattern sites online. Um, I know a lot of yarn brands actually have some free patterns and some paid for patterns. Because, you know, it's like a promotion, so people will buy more yarn, which, hey, it worked on me. I'm always spending too much money on yarn. <laughs> um, so there's lots of free patterns online. Um, there's a site called Ravelry where um, creators like me uh, will post patterns that they have made. And they're sometimes for free, and they're sometimes you can pay for them, like for a digital download. You can also pay for digital downloads off of um, Etsy. So, you know, you can get a PDF. And I get a lot of stuff from those three places. Um, but I'm hoping to make some up soon. I'm not good enough at crochet yet where I feel like I can really truly mess around. This is going to be the extent of my improvising. Like, I'm going to try this pattern that I've planned out first, and then I'm going to try to do um, some more fun ones. Like, I'm going to try to vary up what my pattern looks like. But, yeah, I've never actually made any yet. I've just modified them to, like, size them correctly or if I don't like something. But, um... Maybe for a future stream, I was thinking um, of trying to crochet pixel art. Because it's, it's worked in, like, it's planned out in grids just like this is. So I don't see why I wouldn't be able to crochet, like, Kirby or something. But let's count that last thing, because I feel like that was off. Okay. First one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, okay, so that was correct. But I messed up this last stitch because, as you'll remember... For our border stitches, we need to go into both of those loops to really keep it stable. So if I were to leave it like that, um, this wouldn't be, like, structurally sound, I guess. I feel like that's a weird term to use for, like, yarn stuff, because I feel like that's, like, a building engineering one. Like, all the engineers from Centennial are going to come over here and kick my butt. Um, but anyway, so that's our first row. So now it's actually starting to look like something, right? Kind of looks like bricks right now, but um, that's okay, because it's going to get cooler with time, as always. Also, yeah, thank you for the compliments, you guys. I'm I'm largely self-taught, and I've never really done it um, for any purpose but, like, stress relief and, like, doing something random. So, I, yeah, I've never actually, like, tried to halfway decent at it. I just kind of BS my way through. <laughs> and if it turns out, it turns out. And if it doesn't, I just, you know, like, low risk, high, high reward? I guess, kind of. You know, like, it's not risky because I'm not expecting anything out of it. I'm just doing it for myself. But this is different, and now, like, people are watching me, so I'm trying really hard to be diligent for once. <laughs> uh, good question. Um, so, yeah, so basically when people stream here, they can pick whatever topic that they want. So um, I don't have to stick to just crocheting. I can do any number of different things, and I intend to try some new things later because I think that um, the library has a lot of wonderful resources and I really want to be a part of promoting them. So um, we have a space called the Makerspace where there's a lot of different tools to start creating things. Um, and I'm hoping to get in there and maybe use some of their stuff to create things on camera. Like um, they have an embroidery machine and, you know, I, I obviously am crafty. So I was thinking of embroidering on stream, but we'll see. I have to figure out... Um, Practicality wise, I have to figure out how to operate that because I've never done it before. And then I also have to figure out how to, you know, record that well. 
but I'm sure I would get a lot of help from my coworkers. Okay, so we're on our... See, okay, the reason I like this pattern is because, one, you can cut the rows really easily because it's literally, it's alternating colors. You can't mess up. There's three rows. Then, two, you can't miscount because it there's a repeating pattern you have to pay attention. I'm never going to miscount because you'll, you'll see it, like, right away. <laughs> anyway, so I've already done this first border stitch to lock it in, um, and I went through both loops as normal. So, for this pattern, so on this first stitch, I'm not going to do a weird one this time. Um, I'm just going to do my normal single crochet because what happens is that weird stitch, that double crochet, it's going to move over one every single time um, in the round. So I did my first stitch normally, and then for the second stitch, this is where I'm going down. Ooh, wait, sorry. Okay. I just realized that this is absolutely backwards. See, I didn't check. This is why you need to be responsible and like make sure because this part like sticks out so I can tell that I have like a little border here that I can get. Okay, sorry. Anyway, I'm going to redo that border stitch and then we're going to, yeah, repeat that pattern because right now the weird, the weird double crochet will be in our second stitch out of six. Yeah, um, it would be really cool to play my bass guitar on stream. Um, I am a little nervous just because right now I'm learning like establishing chords, so I'm not sure it would be that fun of a stream. Um, but maybe later on when I get a little better with it, or um, I was thinking about bringing music production in because that's something I've done on my own in the past. So I don't know, maybe I could mess around online <laughs> and that would be fun for everyone. But yeah, I was also thinking about using some of the Adobe software like Illustrator or something to draft patterns and then start them on stream because that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so this first, this first stitch directly above that double crochet is normal. So now for this next one, where this one should go, I'm gonna go directly into the chain, right under it. If I can dig that out. <sighs> and this is the problem with tight crocheting because I'm supposed to try to be able to get under there, but because I like to pull things so tight. Maybe, maybe this will be the pattern to like teach me a lesson. Like maybe I just like <laughs> need to be punished for this. Um, so I'll stop doing it. Okay. But. Got into there. Yay. Okay, so this is our double crochet, right? So I already yarned over once. And I got into this, ugh, into this loop. Then I'm yarning over again to pull through. I want to have like three loops. So. Two. One. Yay, okay, so we have that weird double crochet for our second one now. So do you see how this is getting staggered? Like first it was back here, now it's over here. So we're gonna keep going forward so it go like makes this like squiggly pattern. It's gonna be great. You guys are gonna love it. Um Yeah, so you could say that I have a lot of talents, but it's like really <laughs> it's a really a jack of all trades, master of none like situation. So it's like good and bad. Like it's pretty fun and you know, pretty cool. Like it could seem pretty cool to know all this stuff, but um, I don't know, in the past it feels weird to be so sporadic with my interests. Um, I used to give myself a lot of a harder time about that, but I've kind of learned that I'm just a cyclical person and I tend to cycle through interests. So um, it can be really useful when you cycle through interests a lot to like think about what you really like and find out which ones you'll come back to. Like, um, I really like crocheting and I've clearly for a while. But I don't always crochet. Um, it I it goes in waves, you know. Like every every now and then, I remember that I have a bunch of yarn and a bunch of hooks, and I'm like, time to start crocheting again. Um, this is what I want to do right now. But I'm gonna count here real quick: one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have one more to go in this pattern, or like in this uh, repeating round. I'm not sure what to call it really. I'm so bad with yarn terminology, but. Okay, so that's our first. Oh wait, I can just tell because of this double crochet because that's always the first stitch. Aha. See, this pattern is, it seems hard, but it's also so kind to you in terms of keeping track of your numbers for you, which is something I am so terrible at it. So I'm really grateful that like this, like the literally the way it's constructed keeps me honest. Okay, so this is because we've already reached this first stitch um, in our pattern. We're repeating in sixes. So the second stitch now, has to be our weird double crochet, so I'm gonna get in there, hopefully. Oh, that was way easy. Okay. It's just the beginning of that 
that was like real tight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, look at how cool that looks, you guys. Look at how cool that looks. I feel really good. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, I really used to like, I really used to like Captain Jack Sparrow in middle school, so I'm sure like sixth or seventh grade me would be so flattered. <laughs> That, that sounds like I'm not, like, flattered right now. I am. Um, that sounded really mean, I just realized. But <laughs> okay. So, we're going to continue forward with our normal stitches. Let me know if I'm, like, slacking a little too much on the explaining what I'm doing part, because I'm just, like, babbling about, I don't know, like, whatever. <laughs> but. Oh, hi, Swati Mashi. Yeah, um, you should definitely crochet again. It's so much fun, and it's so good when you're, like, watching movies because you have something to do with your hands. I personally, like, I literally can't sit still for that amount of time if I'm not doing something. So I'm usually doing this. Okay, so as you can see, I reached that first stitch again. I'm going to go do my weird double crochet down here again. So we're going to yarn over, get into that. Oh, wait. I keep wanting to enter it from this side, but that's not correct. Like, that's a weird backwards stitch. Like, why am I trying to go? Okay, anyway. Also, like, okay, you can't see that much of me, like, in this camera, like, my face camera, but, like, my elbow's going out like this, which should be your first indication that you're not doing it correctly, because, like, no one, no one's sitting out here, like, knitting or crocheting, just like, no, no, we gotta look relaxed, we gotta look relaxed and cool, right? Um, yeah, but speaking of movies, what have you guys been watching lately? Because I personally, since I love Halloween a ton, I've been watching a lot of Halloween themes, like either scary ones or, um, you know, non-scary ones like Halloween Town or whatever. Um, I also really like um, Over the Garden Wall, which is this animated series that um, was Disney. Was it Disney or Cartoon Network? I think it was Disney that did it. Um, and it's a yeah, it was a short series. It wasn't like an ongoing show, but it's got the best fall time like vibes. <laughs> I've been listening to the soundtrack lately um, because. Yeah, one one single group did most of the music, and it's really good. It's on Spotify. Oh, you watched Black Widow this week. That's really cool. I feel like I've seen a million people trying to pick that for their Halloween costume because it's, like, so popular right now. Um, I'm going to count here real quick again because we should be coming up on my last border stitch, but I just want to make sure. So, one, two, three, five, six. Okay, wait, sorry. That's not the first one. This is the first one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this seventh one, this should have been my border. What happens to you? Because this, this end seems high. Make sure. I think what happened is because for this weird stitch I have to go down, I think I might have crocheted into the back of that stitch by accident. Because you have to, you have to skip one here to open up the count. So that, that's how it should have been. Like I went into this one, but I should have been going into this one. Like, look. Okay, anyway. Yay. So don't do that. Make sure you skip that, like, stitch back there. Sneaky. Okay. So, yes. I want four normal stitches. Going in. Yeah, I'm not wearing my compression gloves today just because, um, first of all, I didn't know if it would show up well on the camera. I was intending to test before I came, but, um, I had some technical issues, so I didn't really have time. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I might wear my compression gloves next time. It's not too bad to crochet for like two hours was my thinking. So I'm not like super worried about damaging my hands today, but I'll probably try to do it in the future. Um, just to see. Yeah, okay, so that's one, four, five, six. So that's correct. And then I just have to do my border stitch to lock this in again, so... Yeah. So also with these ends, because you're like switching off, you're going to have all these like little ratty ends. Um, and you can either leave them out. So what I've seen a lot of the time is you can do that almost um, that kind of uh, tufts of hair type of thing where you cut them a little shorter and you unravel the yarn so it's like all fuzzy at the end. Or you could just like sew them in so you can like weave them into this part and like hide them in the stitches so that you just have... This would actually make a pretty cool scarf pattern now that I'm thinking about it. I might do that uh, later just for myself. These colors are horrible for a scarf, but um, yeah. So I'm avoid getting myself tangled in my two 
colors. I'm going to start with blue. And little Slipknot again, our trusty friend. Oh, see? Fuzzies. Also was trying really hard to bring in not, like, first of all, fun colors, obviously, but I have a lot more yarn at home. I'm trying to, one, limit the amount of yarn I was letting myself bring, and two, I was trying not to bring in any yarn that has, like, stuff on it, because I did not get a yarn tub for, like, a while, so there's just dog hair and people hair in it, and it's it looks so bad. So I was trying to find clean yarn. Oh yeah, it is the Michigan University colors. I actually used to live um, in Michigan. I lived closer to like MSU, but yeah, um, I used to live there for a while. So that's what I was kind of thinking too, but yeah. I, it was so weird living there because everyone wants you to like pick a sports team or whatever. Like, you know, when there's a rivalry, everyone's like, you know, U of M or F U of M or MSU, I almost said FMU. Um, U of M or MSU or like Duke or Chapel Hill and it's like I don't watch sports I promise you I don't have an opinion like while I was living there I was just like no you have to answer it you have to I'm convinced you're secretly hiding your preference and it's like no dude I just can't watch sports I'm sorry <laughs> okay, anyway so now sorry I didn't speak about this but now since that cr double crochet is carrying over so that our pattern can be I went into the first for my weird one. That next row I went into my second. Now for this I'm going to go into my third stitch here um, for my weird double crochet. <laughs> yeah. Probably not good like yarn person like fiber arts terminology to be like that's the weird stitch but you know we use what God gave us or whatever or like we use what our terrible brains gave us and move on. <laughs> Okay, so I did another normal stitch again. Should have been my fourth. This should be six. Okay. So then we're doing more normal stitches. We have to go in and do that weird one on our third. So, yeah, but it's really nice. I just pulled that yarn apart. It's really nice because you don't really have to count. Um, yeah, because the, the pattern itself literally shows you where you're supposed to do it because it's so obvious. So, like, I mean, knock on wood. This is wood. Um, knock on wood, but I, like, you really can't mess this up, like, too bad. Like, it, it'll probably be fine because you'll notice it right away. Especially if you pick, like, contrasting colors like this. Yeah, um, so the tutorial that I watched for this, um... For this video, or sorry, the tutorial I watched for this stream to do this stitch, um, they really emphasize the importance of using contrasting colors. Um, you know, because it looks cool, like it's a big cool pattern. But now I'm thinking, like, what if you were to use these similar shades, like, like this blue or the and this blue for like a more, um, this blue and this blue for like a more subtle effect, so it looks like it's kind of shimmering, like you can't. You know, from far away, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that they're two different colors. You'd think the fabric was really cool. I might try to do something like that at some point. Or I bet if you went with a smaller weighted yarn, so like um, a more thin yarn, you could really get intricate. Like I could make teeth that I probably, especially if I use um, the smallest yarn is called like lace yarn or, or something because people most commonly use lace. If I went that small, which like literally it looks like embroidery thread, um, I bet I could do some really cool, like trippy, surreal patterns. But um, okay, so as you can see, I've reached the point at which I need to do my weird stitch. So I'm gonna cut my yarn over. Ooh. I can always tighten this up. I'm in there. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> You see that? You should not have it that loose. That was bad. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this after I get into that stitch. It's really hard to, like, obviously, since I'm working from up here and going, like, down, it's, like, really difficult trying to get in where I need to get into. I'm trying to be careful because I poked this, like, this single crochet. Um, and I wasn't supposed to do that. But, okay, here we go. Um, I can't help but think that I'd be better on YouTube where I can edit out, like, when I just go on a tangent and forget, like, what I was even doing, but that's okay. 
Okay, so have our weird ditch. So I'm gonna continue. You have to remember to skip that one back there. Then I'm just gonna yeah continue. This is where the pattern should start over again. And um, okay, so I was gonna chart this out all diligently in Illustrator and like show you my Illustrator pattern, um, but Adobe wouldn't let me log in for some reason. Like it wasn't sending me the verification code to my phone. So I literally just opened up Excel, like a grid on Excel and colored the backgrounds of the cells to path this out. So fun fact, like you don't need fancy software to plan something out. You can draw a grid like on a piece of paper, or you could literally, um, yeah, do what I did, get on Excel and just start coloring in cells. Yeah, okay, so we've reached the point at which I have my stitch again. Yay. So I gotta go down here. I just wanted to make sure it didn't look Okay. Gotta go in all the way down here, and it's I have to go up like this. I feel natural, but we're gonna have to do here. This stitch is basically like witchcraft, so I feel like it's fair game to say, like to ask that of me <laughs> for how cool this is, you know? Yeah, and hopefully once I repeat this pattern one full time or something, I'm gonna try and switch patterns and make stuff up, so um, yeah, maybe we'll do some zigzags or something really weird. But yeah, get that stitch. Go into this one. Yeah, but um, back to like my hooks that I was talking about forever ago. I got, yeah, really cool bamboo hooks and I'm really excited to use them because there's this awful sound that your hook can make, like especially if you have a metal hook and like, you know, cheapo polyester yarn or acrylic yarn or whatever, that like when you rub your um, yarn on the hook, sometimes it makes this like awful sound. It's not very loud, but it drives me insane. So it's nice to have like wooden tools. Yeah, so that doesn't happen. I'm just going to count and make sure that we have six back here. One. And by the way, you can tell that this is the first stitch in the pattern because our first, first weird double crochet. So go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's correct. And then I have to do my quarter stitch to lock in. Um, so bamboo hooks, um, to answer your question, um, bamboo hooks are like, I think the same level of quiet as wood, because they're, like, both wood, right? Like, because, you know, like, bamboo is also wood. But bamboo is more lightweight than wood, so it's really nice. Like, I, I can't hand this to you. It's, like, so, so light. Like, it's lighter than this hook. Like, it's, it's like, air, which is weird to t get used to, but um, that's really nice. And then also, I think bamboo hooks are um, more strong. Like, um, they're not more strong, but they can bend easily. Which ironically means that they're less likely to break because it's kind of like those wind wind like buildings that they build to like account for wind where they make the building able to bend so it doesn't snap like it's the same deal with these hooks where it's like they're extra sturdy because they bend breaking yeah and also wooden hooks are so heavy and can be, be really expensive it's like wood But see how cool this is starting to look? It the, That's how it continues. Like, the wave just continues down this. Um, and that's why I really wanted to bring this, because it's something that you can do over and over, like, for streaming purposes. But it also, like, looks cool almost immediately. And, you know, I didn't want to keep you waiting here. I was, I was joking with, like, someone earlier when I was trying to find my streaming topic, because I knew I was going to crochet, but um, I was joking. I was like, yeah, I need to find a pattern that doesn't involve like something really boring like what if i just chained like 50 or, sorry not 50 500 for a blanket i was just sitting here like one two no that would be so boring uh so i wanted to do like a little sample fabric just to... okay so we're gonna get back into here with our border stitch to lock it in wow this one's really resisting me but I've, I've actually eased, you can't tell, obviously, but, like, I've eased up a little for, in comparison to how tight I normally crochet, because I think it's literally impossible to do this pattern and not 
get a little bit loose while you're working it. So the reason that I can talk while doing a complex pattern is because I have been messing up on camera. <laughs> no, I haven't been messing up that much. Um, this is a lot slower than I normally work. I'm normally like sitting there really intense, just like, like <laughs> going at the speed of light or like, but my eyes are on the TV. It's really freaky to see if you like witnessed me doing this. Um, all of my family members probably have, but <laughs> yeah, that's the reason I can talk is because I'm going slower. Yeah, okay. This piece, okay, do you see this piece of yarn? This tricked me because it looks so thick. I was like, what is happening? Like, okay, okay, anyway. <laughs> I think I'm also partially getting tricked because I've been using thinner, like, I've been practicing with thinner yarn lately. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's too big. That, that has to be a trick. Um, yeah, it really is jeans for my grandma. Um, my grandma on my mother's side um, is really into fiber arts. She crochets and I think she also knits. Um, and I think she's also done some like lace stuff. I feel like I've seen that around the house, but she used to like do it a lot. I don't know if she does it that much anymore, but um, I actually originally learned um, so I could, you know, staying at my parents' house. Um, and I wanted to be able to bond with her and like do something together that we would both like. So I literally picked up crocheting to hang out with her, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, um, she got trapped in India, unfortunately, over COVID. So um, that's a bummer. But I've been calling her a lot and I get to send her pictures of what I've made. And she's always uh, really, like, really uh, proud of me. And she thinks they're really cool. That's always really nice. <laughs> Even if I'm making like really weird things that she wouldn't have made, like I made myself a steering wheel cover and I made myself like a bottle holder for my big hydro flask. Okay, but yeah, as you can see, the double crochet moved one over. So it was in this third one. Now it's gone to this fourth one. So we're continuing that wave because it looks really cool. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping someday to try and draft my own pattern. And I'm also hoping someday to do a bigger project. Um, I think the biggest thing I've ever done, or I'm currently doing, I started this one like weird skull pattern blanket thing at the beginning of October, because you know, October, the minute it's October 1st, like something happens to me where I'm like, it's but um, yeah, I was doing this uh, skull crochet pattern that I saw on YouTube, and I like literally just started doing it because I was stressed out over exams and stuff. Um, so it's really messy, but I've been working on this blanket and I haven't really planned how big it's going to be because the way it's worked is like it goes from the center out, which is how a lot of crochets normally work. Like you work it in rounds. So like it's circular. This is in rows. But anyway, yeah, because it just goes out. I don't have to pre-plan like how big it is. I can just continue to go out. So yeah, I started that with no intention of figuring out how big it was going to be. I was just like, I'll stop when I feel in my heart that I'm supposed to stop. Um, and I started making out of black yarn. And I, I think I already finished one ball of black yarn. And I only own two more balls of black yarn. So I guess I figure <laughs> when I get through those two balls, if I get through those two balls, I will reevaluate that and be like, okay. <laughs> Should I continue with this or... So we're going in with our double crochet again, all the way down there. Yeah. And in, because that's what we do. crochet. Even if you mess up, you can always unravel and go back and fix it. Even if you're tying stuff in, you saw me do that. Yes, I wasted a little bit of yarn, but it's okay. Also, um, if you're interested in like sustainability, like um, I, I know I am just personally because like one, it's budget friendly and like you like you know the environment yada 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 um uh there's a lot of really cool ways if you're into crafting to like recycle fabric or recycle yarn um i've seen a lot of videos by people on how to um patch together like those ends like this ratty end and like repurpose it like you join your old yarn you franken yarn and that's actually what it's called like when people use a bunch of random yarn to make one pro one messy project like they call it franken yarn um because you're you know gluing together a bunch of different yarns and it it usually turns out really colorful and messy but like really cool um and it's really got that homemade feel to it and i've seen some people do really neat projects with it and it's so awesome um to not be wasteful like that yeah i really should get anushka into um crocheting she i 
Well, actually, I don't I don't know how much she likes to sit down and do something like really small and minute. So it depends on whether she wants to do that. Um, she's much younger than me, but I don't know, maybe. Yeah, so um, there's that. There's Franken yarn stuff where you use a bunch of scraps of yarn to create something. Um, there's you can make yarn out of old t-shirts where like you cut it into like strips and then you stretch it out so like um the fabric gets like thinner i guess because you've stretched it out and you can use that to make a lot of things um i myself have used it there's like a lot of rugs that people will make out of that stuff like i'm sure you've seen them it's like those circle rugs that look like they're made out of tied together cloth um because you literally hand crochet like for if your yarn is big enough you do it with your hands you don't need like a hook because you're just picking up like pieces and just <laughs> doing it so weird and cool yeah um you can make old t-shirts and yarn you can you can obviously also use fabric to um like sew stuff i know i myself um i cleared out my closet recently and i figured out what to donate what to turn to scrap fabric and then um what to throw out which was very few things it was like things that were so worn that like i couldn't in good conscience like donate them no one's gonna use them or um, I also went through my um, my actual closet of stuff that I wear, and I started weeding out like things that I just haven't been wearing for some reason, thinking about why I don't wear them. I think that can be a really cool way to be sustainable that people don't talk about. Because it doesn't occur to you that the clothes that you don't wear in your closet, they're just taking up space. Like, they're not useful for anything. And you kind of bought them, maybe on impulse, or maybe, you know, they served you well at one point, and they don't really anymore. It can be really cool to go through and either, like, a lot of people donate... To get rid of those but for the ones that it's a very specific reason why i'm not wearing it since i'm crafty i like to like try and figure out how i can make it something that i do want to wear so like i'm dyeing clothing i'm altering clothing i'm fixing clothing it's it's really cool um it's been really rewarding but also it's like such an ongoing project like obviously i can't do it like i'm basically never going to be finished i'm always just going to have a tub for like alterations <laughs> um but so we're starting our new row, going into that border stitch as always. You guys know the drill. <laughs> I hate I hate yarn fuzzies. They make everything look so gross. But not first. This is like really loose. Like those worrying loose. But we'll we'll see. We'll see if that's okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. A lot of the time, unless something's like literally loose, like the edge is slipping out. Um, if your weave is too loose it's not that big of a problem just because like you can distribute that tension along all of your pattern and especially if you're only working with one type of yarn like my case is a little different because i've been cutting and tying um but if you know you can imagine if i'm weaving it out of one piece of yarn you can just kind of stretch it out and like you know distribute that tension and that's uh something that you do when you block which is cool um especially when you have more intricate patterns like stuff that's not like a flat cloth like there's netting or something like imagine lace um your your fabric can get really lumpy and like won't lay flat obviously because you're doing all these little twisty bits so where blocking is really cool you can like stretch it out into its intended shape so we're back to our weird stitch here i'm gonna go down here i can get in okay <laughs> all right we're 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 in okay Good stitch accomplished. I'm gonna skip back. Moving on. I actually I thought this like I was getting scared at the beginning because I was like messing up a little. But now that I've done it for what, throw my own one, two, four, five, six. Now that I'm on my sixth throw, like this actually feels like really effortless. Like I'm telling you, it seems like it could be complicated, and you know that's a deceptive part, right? When something looks really cool, you're like, oh my god, this is gonna be really hard, or if there's like some sort of change that's being made, you know, like it's not, like it's a twist on something, that's also like, can trick you into thinking something's really difficult, but especially if it's like a pattern, it's a repeating thing, and you just keep at it. Like practice makes perfect, right? So now you can see, like, I started out like bumbling, I had to cut that whole part out, but like right now, I'm, I'm holding up this conversation, and I'm not struggling at all keeping up with this. I'm pretty sure I could just like watch something and do this at this point. Can't watch a movie with you guys, so that would be really weird. Don't even know how I'd set that up, and also that's not, that's too chaotic of a stream. I'm not sure many people can stand the level of, like, multiple 
stimuli that I have going at any given moment. <sighs> but thank you guys for the encouragement. Um, it can be a little nerve wracking to push through um, when you don't understand something, but you just gotta, you know, keep going and eventually, hopefully, probably you'll get the hang of it. Like, I know everybody jokes about fake it till you make it, but that's, that's for real. Like, because if you, if you project confidence and you just keep going, like, eventually you will get it, right? Like, no one's going to fail forever, probably, unless something's, like, really wrong. Like, you're being really unrealistic. So, to a certain degree, just, like, crook in. Especially, like, for me, for some reason, I'm pretty, like, I'm a pretty good problem solver, I think. Um... So I always like um, throw myself at things really hard and mess up a lot, and then I get really good after that. Like after that, my growth is exponential, and it's really fun. We're going. Which? Wow, it's five thirty already. <laughs> That's pretty. Oh wait, I need to not go into that backstage. Ah, see, messing up. But it's not that bad. It's like less bad than my mistakes from before. So it's like, you know, we're learning. Okay, okay, so we're in there. I'm gonna lock that in and then I'm gonna cut again. All right. So as always to knot this, we're gonna pull through. I love how easy knotting is with crocheting because you literally just pull the center of it. Don't do anything. <laughs> Um, I hate it for sewing. I'm so bad at it. Okay. Like, I know it's not that hard either, but, like, I don't know. Sometimes we're extra bad at things for no reason, like, really small things. Okay, so our trusted friend, the Slipknot. We're gonna go in again. Yeah, and I was, I was at first worried that I wouldn't be able to remember which side is left and which side is right, but especially as you get this, like, you know, bigger, it's really easy to tell because your your first weird one was the first stitch. So you look at the bottom and it's right there. Yeah, also the back of this looks super, I guess it's not a whack. It's just really lame. Like it's uneven. Um, <laughs> right of it. So that's, that's all we care about really, right? Don't, just don't look back there. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I think this would be a cool pattern for like pillows too, especially if you sewed it because like, now I'm trying to think of things where you wouldn't see the back, and if you sewed a pillow cover, no one would see this side. Well, the pillow would see this side, but the pillow doesn't have eyes. So, <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. Or for, like, clothing, although this print might be a little busy. You might have to do a simpler pattern. It's so loose. I keep having this problem. I'm going to make sure this first uh, single crochet that it's tight. Like, I guess it makes sense that my locking in Order stitches need to be really tight, but everything else like loose. That's what's keeping it stable. We won't make that mistake. Okay, because this is a sample, a little sample cloth. Yeah, but there's my first going. Wanna unwrap? <laughs> um. Yeah, I can absolutely send pictures on my work. I mean, I can't post them here on this stream right now because I'd have to, um, like, go find them and then put them on the screen, but I can definitely, like, next stream or on my social media somewhere um, post things that I've done in the past, but I can also just talk about them here really quick just because, you know, you aren't going to be able to see them until later, but um, let's see. I think I mentioned my, um, like, steering wheel cover, and that was really easy because there's this thing called granny squares and crocheting, and it's almost the most basic of crocheting where it's like you make this little square and then usually you make a lot of that little square sometimes with alternating colors but it's like the same pattern and you patch them together to make something um and because you're patching together like a lot of squares to make something it's really easy to turn that into a lot of things you can make sweaters make blankets obviously like a lot of things but i i pieced them together like in a ring and made a steering wheel cover for my car um and so that's really fun um, I also have a crochet water bottle holder. Um, I think I made myself a laptop case. What else? Oh, my very first project was, um, I made my partner at the time a giant infinity scarf, <laughs> which is pretty fun, because, um, their, their old scarf was getting, like, so, so, like, uh, busted, and I think it was, like, from, like, several years ago, so, like, you need to get rid of the scarf, and they really didn't want to buy one. Like, if I make them one... <laughs> 
they cannot get rid of it because they'll 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 feel sad um and also you know all jokes aside i made out of like a really soft yarn like i think i used a baby blanket yarn which if you want to find like really soft yarn look for the baby blanket ones because they want babies to be more comfortable than us and i think that's whack we deserve to be that comfortable <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I grabbed baby blanket yarn. I made this giant, enormous infinity scarf, which if you don't know what an infinity scarf is, it's like the two ends of the scarf are sewn together so that it's like a big loop, loop around your neck. Uh, yeah, and that thing is extra, extra long and like very pillowy. So like literally, I've fallen asleep in public wearing that thing because it's like it keeps you warm enough and you can kind of use it as a pillow while it's on you <laughs> that like I could fall asleep. Oh yeah, my mom mentioned, I mean, that, so that's not crocheting. I've, I've done a lot of projects, but I guess I was trying to be specific to crocheting. Um, I macrameed my, um, my aunt and uncle a, um, one of those flower pot holders, you know, like the hanging ceiling ones that you see, um, because she had macrame thread and was kind enough to let me use it. And so like, I think that night or something, I just went like literally insane and I sat by myself for like three hours or something and I was just like trying to figure out how to macrame on the spot because I'd never done it before but I was so fascinated by the fact that there was like a spool of macrame like rope that I could just use <laughs> so I made I spent a bunch of time uh doing that very intensely like not talking to anyone and I made it and I gave it to her before we left and I was like really proud I managed to learn it um, and at that point, they had not seen me exhibit this behavior. Like, everyone that's been around me, like, a lot knows that sometimes I get, like, really intense on lockdown and just will figure things out in a whole day or will read everything on a topic in one single day. But it can be, like, a little alarming, granted, uh, if you're not used to me doing that in front of you. So <laughs> they were like, are you okay? Like, what's happening? And... <laughs> Yeah, my parents had to explain like, no, Priyanka just kind of does this. Like, it's okay, just leave, leave him alone. Uh, you know, like Priyanka will just come join us when <laughs> when that's over. Just wait it out. Okay, so I'm trying to. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm trying to figure out my count because I'm so worried. Okay, so this is my first one. All the way. Like I'm gonna look at the back because this is not helping me count very easily. <laughs> okay. Four, five, seven, nine. That's where. Seventeen. Yeah. So this last one should be my border stitch. Fine. I just. You know, when you look at a word for long enough, and it, like it's spelled fine, but you look at it long enough that you convince yourself that you've spelled it wrong? That's what just happened to me, but like with you and this pattern. And I was like, this looks like I'm messing up. But I wasn't. It's okay. False alarm. Okay. Yay. Going well. Yeah, um, I'm always like, and like I said, a jack of all trades, so I'm always making all sorts of crazy junk. Um, as a result, my home is like a dragon's horde. Like, there's a bunch of random cluttered, like, halfway done projects, so it's like really weird. Um, but, you know, everything in the world is on the internet, essentially. Like, you can literally learn anything on the internet. I think I'm good proof of that. Like, you don't have to have any skill. You just have to have, like, willpower and, like, be, I guess, a little bit insane. Like, sit down and figure it out. Um, I think, actually, before the scarf, one of the even earlier things that I crocheted, um, and if Rishi Mama and Anushka, you guys are still on here, um, I went to my uncle, actually, on the stream, my uncle's for Thanksgiving with my family one year, um, and we were just hanging out there, and I would brought my crochet hook because I just started to want to do it. And it was really like the night before Thanksgiving or the night of Thanksgiving or something. And I sat down with my yarn, I think left over from the scarf and my hook. And I crocheted my cousin like a cat, one of those cat ears, like hats, like on the spot while I was watching a movie with the kids. And like, I had the YouTube video pulled up on my phone, like at my side. 
And I just, like, did it in, like, an hour. Fueled by, like, wine, I guess. <laughs> don't worry, I was legal. Um, don't be mad at me, work. But, um, yeah, I was just, like, drinking wine, and I was like, hey, I made this, like, just now. I think I think I had this conversation with the adults, like, my, my uncle and my parents, and I was like, I made this hat, and they were like, oh, before? And I was like, no, like, just now. We watched a movie, and during the movie, I finished it. They were like, what? <laughs> Hello? Oh, excuse me? Yeah, so. Okay, so. We're almost at the end of this pattern. I don't know if you could see this, or you can see it, but um, right now I think it's the fifth stitch. That's the weird one. Um, so as this one, we're gonna have the very last stitch, our weird one. After that, we repeat this pattern over again. So um, I'm gonna show you. I think I'm gonna go a little bit into repeating it again. I was gonna try and switch um types of mosaic, but I guess I'll have to save that for another stream because um. Yeah, this took longer than I thought. But I was gonna try and um, improvise and vary up patterns, so maybe I'll just come back and add to this um, next time. And you guys can see how I, yeah, how I change my pattern. Hopefully that time I'll be able to get like Adobe to like let me into my account. <laughs> and maybe I'll like draft my patterns um, live on stream and that'll be pretty cool. But. Yeah, no, that was a crazy Thanksgiving. I feel like, um, so we've only had that one family living in the U.S. for, like, a really long time. And so recently, ugh, most of our relatives are, are in India. And recently, some people moved closer to us, which I'm really happy about. Um, but for a long time, we only had my, like, uncle's family in New Jersey. So we've become, like, really, really close with them. And I miss them a lot because I haven't seen them in COVID. Um, yeah, they... <laughs> I feel like they've been party to, like, my weird, intense phases, like, the most. Because, like, obviously my parents and my little sister have seen my weird phases. But, like, I feel like they signed up for that when they had me. <laughs> but, like, my other family, you know, obviously since they're not living, like, near near us, they don't get to see me that often. So every now and then I just roll up and it's like, hey, I'm doing this new crazy thing. Again. And they're like, all right, Priyanka. Okay, <laughs> just, oh man, it is really nice having family close by. Um, I have two different, like, um, little households in our state now, which is so crazy. Because like I said, the closest one before was um, in New Jersey. Um, and we lived in Michigan at the time, so that was, we used to drive there so much. Like, me and my sister, and I guess my parents, are, like, really good at doing, like, intensely long drives now. Like, I think it's, like... 10 or 12 hours or something crazy to get there from Michigan. I think it's 12, like, with breaks and stuff. Um, and we were doing this when, like, me and my sister were, like, younger. So, like, thank you to my parents for not leaving us by the side of a road, like, multiple times throughout our childhood, because <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure we were insufferable. No, I can remember being insufferable. <laughs> uh, we also had this, um, like, little DVD player thing. That you could hang on the backs of seats. This was my day before, um, like, screens were built into cars, which is a wild thing to happen. But, yeah, back then there were no, like, random TVs in cars. So, like, my parents bought this little DVD player situation where it's two different screens that you could connect and hang on the back of the like, driver's seat and the passenger seat. So you could see, like, watch the movies in the back. And me and my sister would just have... Probably the word like we would repeat the same movies again and again, right? Because we would use just the DVDs we had in the house because we didn't want to rent like for a vacation to get the dust off. So my parents, my poor sweet parents, had to listen to the same, same like five or six movies I think over and over again for twelve hours every time we traveled across the country. So like I know it sounded sarcastic, but I for real mean it. Thank you for not leaving us by the side of the road while we were, like, reciting dialogue from Flushed Away for the umpteenth time. Or, like, the Spongebob Squarepants movie. My god. <laughs> I don't know if I can have kids for that reason alone. Like, the things that I remember doing as a child were horrendous. Okay, I'm gonna count again. Three, four, five, six, seven, ten, twelve. 
Eight. Oh, two more to go. I'm gonna redo that count. I feel like I just forgot how to count. No. Five. Seven. Eight. Nine. Twelve. Three. No, that's correct. Okay. Oh, I just didn't see it down there. Okay, okay, we're good. False alarm. But fun fact, um, this pattern is really kind and the colors alternate so I can tell if I've messed up. But um, for other patterns, there are these things called uh, stitch markers that are just these little plastic circles that you can um, hook onto different parts of your yarn so that you can literally, you can see where you were um, in it. And you can, like, I usually try to have them every fifth or tenth stitch so I know um, I can keep count of stuff. And they're they're really useful. I have a little um, pack that I got for Joann's for, like, Bucks. Um, and it has like several different colors so that you can, you know, I guess for different. Um, but yeah, I have like blue, pink, and green. And it's like pretty cool because it's so tight. Um, but yeah, like I, if I do um, intervals of 10, I'll like do the blue on the tens and like the whites on the fives or something, you know, so I can keep track of stuff. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so now, yeah, I think. Oh, I was supposed to do that last one. Okay, okay, good thing I checked. Yeah, because this is the end, like this is the last thing before I just repeat this pattern over again. So my double crochet should be this last stitch in the pattern and then I have to lock it in here, so. I'm gonna go ahead and do that weird double crochet. I forgot to. Um, I got really preoccupied by talking about how annoying me and my sister were on road trips. Um, I used to joke with my parents that when me and my sister learned to drive, um, that they could sit in the back and they could chill, and me and my sister would be driving and they could they could be the ones to watch the movies. Um, but now me and my sister can both drive for long distances, but, um, my sister lives in Charlotte and I live at State. Um, and, like, I'm not that far from them, but, like, we don't get to meet that often, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I feel like I made a lot of whack promises in my head. Yeah, but, um, so you can have stitch markers to count your stitches, and there's also, um, there's also like a little button clicky thing that you can get to like it'll ca it'll literally count how many rows you've done if you don't want to like count up the side because you know again alternating colors so I can tell easily with this but with other stuff where it's all the same color yarn it's really difficult to tell sometimes like how many rows you've done so it's like literally a little circle device thing and you click a button and it like goes one <laughs> click it it's like a pedometer like those old timey pedometers um. It's not a pedometer. We had a clicky thing in our house that basically did that. It's super old and from India, and I think it was my grandfather on my dad's side, because um, I think it was that he would do, like, meditation, and you, he had to, like, repeat this mantra, which is, like, a prayer, a saying. Whatever. He had to uh, repeat it, like, to, um, like, repeat a thing multiple times, and I guess he would have to do it a lot, because he was, like, good at religion. <laughs> and... Um, he, he had that to, like, to count how many times he did it. So, I wonder if we still have that in the house, because I could really use that, um, for this. Gotta back it up. Okay, so, last round, our sixth stitch was the, um, one where we started to, yeah, do the weird crochet. So now, we're all the way back to the beginning. So, after this border stitch, my very first... Um, stitch is going to be that weird double crochet one because we're literally repeating um, how we started out. Get in. So I'll show you. Actually, I'll do a couple stitches before I show you the similarity between the top and the bottom because I just realized looking at this is not. I'll need room to work with. Did 
gonna just do the last sixth one just to... okay this is enough space basically here's where it gets cool do you see where we first started where we first started this pattern it was the first stitch we're doing that exact same thing up here again but it's a different color works but look we're back at the beginning so like i would just literally continue like that and um Normally, this is where I would change up the pattern, but because we don't have too much time left and I don't want to start something I can't um, wrap up satisfying, I'm just going to continue going. I'm actually a little worried about this. Two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Okay. Sorry, I was worried that this one was off for some reason. Here. Mm, I think I actually might need to take a look at this last row. Ooh, I feel like it's something's not right about it. I think I went, I think I actually um, messed up and instead of going into the last one, I started doing what I'm supposed to be doing. No, okay. But again, the pattern is kind to me, so I would see something wrong with this, this twisty thing. I think that what happened is, you can see these two yellow ones? There's supposed to be a yellow one coming down here. Right? This isn't. Yeah, I think that's literally it, that this last row is wrong because, okay, I'm gonna start unraveling. Sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, but the loose ends, um, so you can either leave them loose and you can start unraveling the yarn to make them fuzzy and nice, like kind of like you would see on the edge of a rug, or you can weave them into this and like, you know, you can weave them back into this, like into the back here, like go up and down like a tapestry needle, which is just a really, um, so that you can't see any of those ends. So it would just look like, well, hopefully that'll be a little neater, but you know what I mean? It'll look like that. Yeah, but um especially um it would be I always thought it was really nice on scarves when they had those ends, like um little frayed fiber ends. Yeah. Be holding on tight. At the very least my knots are secure. Like I guess that's good that I can't take it out that easily, but oof. Ah well. Love and you learn. That's actually doing several, undoing several rows here, apparently. This goes down a little further spot. I think I got cocky. Um, but you get the general point. And um, yeah, I've seen examples where um, you continue and you can switch colors or you can even pattern for this. Um, and when you continue with colors, it'd be really cool. So you know how I'm using two colors, right? Like color A and color B. So sometimes when you're switching colors, it can be fun to leave one color the same all the time and then change that other one. So I've seen a really cool stained glass almost-esque blanket where um, the one of the colors stayed black the whole time. But one of the other color, like the other colors were like rainbow. Like they would always change. So it was really cool because that black really act, like acted as a border because it you know, was the constant. Um, so I've been thinking about doing that lately, but that was something so elaborate. I was like, first of all, that'll take way too long to do on stream. Um, and second of all, that's difficult sounding and <laughs> I don't have the brain space for that right now. That one's right there. But yeah, I'm going to recycle this yarn later. So don't even worry about this entire mess that I've created. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, crocheting is also a really nice thing to pick up, or like any fiber arts is really nice to pick up for like fall. I don't know, it's really cozy to, you know, be sitting with like a warm drink and you're sitting on your couch, maybe a blanket, um, and you're just doing this. Yeah, really nice. I'm having so much trouble untangling, and I think it's because I'm not used to having to um, like cut this. So I'm literally cutting this double crochet and I'm messing it all up, so I'm gonna have to go back further because I keep cutting. Stuff that I'm not supposed to cut. That's okay. 
We're going to figure it out. Also, um, another useful thing to get, not so much for crochet, but um, for if you're sewing and you mess something up, is a seam ripper. Because it's like one little small blade. Not a blade, but like a point, a thing that's sharp enough to cut your string. With like a ball on the end so it doesn't shred your fabric and you can just like run it through like, like how um you know how you like cut paper for gift wrapping where you have this like under the paper and you just slide forward um yeah that's really useful for sewing also for embroidery i've i've done some embroidery not too much um but when you mess up like big patches especially if you're making like a big tapestry like you're doing an illustrated scene Seam rippers will be your friend because <laughs> you have to remove large patches of stuff like I'm doing right now. It'd be really painstaking to pick it out. Um, maybe I'll do a stream on recycling yarn since I seem to be messing up so much on this one. Just to reassure you guys that I'm not scrapping all of this. Okay. But I'm pretty... Yeah, oh my god. Okay. This is fine. It'll be okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, as you can see, because this double crochet is taller, I keep thinking that it's coming from like two rows above and mistakenly getting rid of it. So don't do that. Um, if you're smart and you try the stitch, what you'll do is just do it carefully and slowly and really, yeah, like precisely unlike me. See, this is how you could tell like this is me on precision mode. Like this level of messing up is me going slow. So that's obviously pretty concerning. I might actually try to start a new mosaic one if I have time here. Um, or I might just talk about these hooks, honestly. That might be a better use of my time since I only have like seven minutes, but I thought I would show you these bamboo ones um, because, wow, they're so crazy, but yeah, so these are bamboo hooks. They're really lightweight, and as you can see, I have a variety of sizes, and um, the thicker hooks correspond to thicker yarn. Um, Show you really quick what I usually use, like, um, you know, condition these. I got this like hand salve technically, but it was from Whole Foods because, um, I needed it to be like all natural. And I literally read the ingredients list on the back to make sure that it had beeswax in it. And I was looking to make sure that there was nothing in it that would mess with the quality of this. Basically, I got some like hand salve. Yeah, I would just like literally like rub it on my hands and <laughs> condition my hooks. And usually you do this like prior to doing it. So if you um, want to condition your hooks and use them, don't like use them immediately. They can soak all this in. Um, and they get really pretty and shiny. They were like really dry and gross before. And but now they're this beautiful wood color. Yeah. And yeah, Anushka, I'd be happy to teach whatever whenever we finally get to meet. But um. <laughs> Yeah, but these hooks basically they're really nice, but they take a lot more upkeep, right? You have to condition them kind of like how you would look at a wood cutting board nice. I mean you have to use them a lot to wear in this this part where the grain is. Um and then also just, you know, it's wood, so you have to keep it like in a temperature controlled setting. Or not temperature controlled, but you know, you don't want the temperature or the humidity to vary too much. Because and I'll show you this. This is not my fault, by the way. This is um how the hooks arrived in transit because I got them recently. This hook, I don't know if you can see, but it's like warped. Like it's it's not a straight line. I'll put this one next to it for comparison. You can see that it like curves this way. And I think it's because I got these from the internet. Like I bought them from eBay. So this one hook got like warped. And like, yeah, it's not it's not a straight line, <laughs> which is bad. I mean I guess it doesn't strongly affect my crocheting, but I feel like that makes it more likely to snap. So I'm gonna get it replaced. <laughs> Um, but also, I talked about hook sizes earlier, and because this comes as a set and nice hook set, um, they've actually done the, me the favor of labeling them instead of <laughs> no label on this. Um, so, like, it's etched into the wood. So this says the U.S. size, which is 15, and it also says the millimeter. Um, like I said, I find the millimeters better to go by because it's like a you know, like a standard unit. And whenever says, someone says a hook size, right? Like sometimes they don't say UK or US. Like I literally, like they say like 12 and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. 
let me try and guess your accent to see if I can try and place you if you haven't like told me already. Yeah, I usually try to go by the millimeters because it's just more standard for me. And um, it also really helps because the yarn is measured much in the same way. So you can use those pieces of information. So also, I know that I mentioned on the back of yarn, I don't know if I still have that label, but on the back of yarn, there's like um, yarn waist sizes, right? So usually the, the hook corresponds to what yarn, yarn you're using. But um, once you get more advanced, you realize that um, sometimes, even though there's like a, you know, a normal hook that you would use, for that yarn, there's like really a range of hooks you can keep in the neighborhood. But like, let's say you have really bulky yarn, but you want it to be like tighter knit, right? So normally where I would use this for that yarn, if I want it to be tighter knit, I'll just go down a size, like a size or two. So it won't be off enough to mess up my pattern, but it'll be like tighter. And that would be good for like, I don't know, a sweater or something, right? Because you don't want like to be able to see through the fabric. Then if I'm doing that same pattern, but I want it to be more loose knit and more relaxed, um, I can use I can use this bigger one, like a size bigger. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, to be able to make that decision, especially now that I have all these little ones, I'm hoping to get into late stuff, um, which I would really love to do on stream. But um, I yesterday when I was testing for this stream, I was trying to see what would show up best, and <laughs> that string is so tiny. Like this 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 string is medium. Like, this is middle of the road for reference, so, like, that string was, like, I don't know, maybe half this thickness. It was really small, so it wasn't, it wasn't showing up, so I didn't do that. Um, but to explain, these are my compression gloves that I talked about earlier to keep my hands safe, like, my blood flowing. And they're, they're literally, like, spandex. I'm sure you could make them easily, but, um, they're just, like, tight little gloves that I keep on. And they, they look a little, like, ratty because I use them so much to clean my hands. But this tight fabric, like, around your wrist especially and, like, using on your hands, like, it just keeps everything moving. And obviously, you know, do your wrist exercises. Um, I usually do the ones that are most commonly used for, like, office settings. Like, if you're t trying to type on a keyboard, because um, I'm used to those exercises just, you know, from having to type. But they're also good for crochet. But especially if you're doing crochet or knitting, it's good to do some, like, finger ones as well. <laughs> it's really nice that you're complimenting these super ratty gloves, but yeah, I, I do like them because they keep this, this library that I work in is really all the time. So I'm really grateful to have an additional, I don't die of course. But I also wanted to show you guys something else really cool because um, I wanted to circle back around to libraries. Um, we have a lot of resources here. Um, in terms of like cool stuff like technology and like the embroidery machine and all that, but we obviously also have books and I feel like this is really silly considering it's a library and I work here, but I always like forget that there's books in here and like how many books there are. Like there's some really insane stuff. Um, and so while I was at work one day, I was like looking at the library and I, this isn't the book cause I didn't check it out. I just bought this, but they have books on crocheting and knitting. So um, if you go to state and you really, really want to um, like rent out a book to do some stuff, like you can rent out like a dictionary. And these one, these books are really cool because they can get to the table of contents. Like literally they show you a bunch, like a bunch of different stitches. It's so, so neat. And then they show you how to do them. And because it's literally just a basic stitch, you can modify this into any pattern you want. It's just like, literally it's the texture. And there's like a million in here. There's a book a lot like this that was um, in, I believe, Hunt Library that I read. Um, and I that's why I bought this one, because I thought it really useful to have, like, you know, a big book of patterns. <laughs> and um, there are some other really cool ones as well. There's like um, fashion history and textile history. So I found a book on, I'm Indian, so this is pertinent to me. But I also looked at other cultures. But I found specifically like an Indian textile making, like um, how people would weave and knit and like do all that stuff. Um, Cause there's a big market there. But yeah, I was looking at those and I was trying to think how could I incorporate that to my crochet? Cause it'd be really fun to do. You know, when you think of art, you usually think 2D art and you don't think of um, like 3D art, like crocheting or sculpture or whatever, but each different region has like um, a type of that art that's like specific. So I never thought of people like doing yarn art or like crocheting or anything in India or like, okay, crocheting is a bad example for India, but 
Like I've been looking up, there's like, um, I, there's Irish traditional crocheting and there's like Icelandic traditional crocheting. And I think mosaic was born out of one of those. I can't remember which, I'm so sorry, but um, there's, there's a bunch of really cool, cool things to branch out into, especially if you get into the history. Of Visit libraries, check out books specifically here, but you know, any library is good. <laughs> um, yeah, I would really encourage you to read on stuff because I don't know, I think in with the internet, I know I harped about YouTube, but we really forget how useful books are. Like these also like list like what in like all this stuff that I talked about, like yarn sizing and what tools you would need. I don't know. It's really nice to have something. But um, unfortunately, that's about time. It's like six o'clock. So um, it's time for me to end streaming, but it was really awesome to talk to you guys and to be able to like demo this online, even if it was like a little rough at the beginning. I really appreciate y'all sticking with me and yeah, coming along for the ride, but I'm going to log off. But this has been Priyanka, local yarn enthusiast. And, um, hopefully I'll come in soon with some cooler projects and yeah, I'll, I'll catch you guys in two weeks. <laughs> I'll see you guys later.